when a customer calls in, it's problematic, it's frustrating because you don't know me. Why don't you know me? And I have to repeat my information and repeat the issue and repeat what I bought and who I am and all of those things. So, you know, that's, that, that's one of the ways or another one of the ways where information asymmetry will cause a problem and not allow the brand to be customer centric. In order for us to talk about how information asymmetry gets in the way of building a customer-centric culture, we have to first understand what that is. Information asymmetry is, it really means that one, there's two parties and one party has more information about a product, a transaction, interact, whatever it is, than the other party does. It gets in the way of building a customer-centric culture because a customer-centric culture is one where we put the customer's best interests at the heart of everything that we do. And when the, you know, the data balance is lopsided and it's usually the customer that gets the short end of that stick, then we really aren't taking the customer's best interests at heart. We lose trust in the brand that we're interacting with because they've got information about us. We don't know how they've collected it. We don't know how they're using it and they're not sharing that with us. Another way that, that we're seeing that this creates an issue with customer centricity is this lack of ability to personalize experiences. If we as a brand haven't asked customers for the information, for their preferences, and we haven't taken the time to really understand who they are and what their preferences are, then we can't build out an experience that they you know, deserve or, or what they expect, right? The last thing that I would, would say is that, and there are probably a lot more, but I, I would say there's an issue when it comes to resolving problems. If somebody contacts customer support or customer service, and the agent doesn't have the information that they need about the customer. So they don't have a holistic view of the customer, all the interactions, the products, the transactions that the customer has had with that brand. And, and they don't really know the customer like they should. When a customer calls in, it's problematic, it's frustrating because you don't know me. Why don't you know me? And I have to repeat my information and repeat the issue and repeat what I bought and who I am and all of those things. So you know, that's, that, that's one of the ways or another one of the ways where an information asymmetry will cause a problem and not allow the brand to be customer centric. I would say that from an industry perspective, a great example is the real estate industry. If the buyer and the seller have information about a property and the seller knows more about his home than, than he's sharing with the buyer and the buyer ends up, or the prospect I should say, ends up buying the house, and discovers something, then they will be frustrated and, and really not happy with the purchase that they made. So in order for brands to address this, so we're not at a level of information asymmetry, it's really important that we collect, when we collect information or we ask uh, customers for information, we tell them what we're gonna do with it. We tell them how we're going to use it, whether that's information about their transactions or their interactions, or it's feedback that they provide to us. We should always be communicating back and forth in terms of, Thanks for your feedback, here's how we're gonna use it, or here's your data, here's how we're gonna use it, and give uh, customers access to their data so they can take a look at it, see what you know about them. Be aware of whose data you have, right? You know, is it family data? Is it individual data? How many people are on this account and how many people are, are you actually, do you have data on versus do you have data just about that one individual?